So today I'm just going to run down in a very straightforward how I went about creating the system that you're going to see in this clip here. And what it basically allows you to do is run a normal state machine or cycler as some people have called it on a gesture and have it advance by one state or animation each time you do the gesture without resetting. So as you can see here, each time I do the gesture, the number increases by one instead of starting over from one and requiring me to hold the gesture to get to five, I can hit the gesture five times very quickly and I'll be in the same position. As you can see, it functions exactly like you think it would. Each time this animator is triggered, which is what the gesture would do, it cycles by one. The only real method that I've found to be uh, effective at resetting this is to turn the object off and turn it back on. That resets all of the state machines in the system back to their default positions and allows you to start the cycler over at your leisure instead of every time you do the gesture. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I am going to be modifying this to be a little bit simpler. Instead of scrolling UVs, I'm just going to have it change the color. So I'm going to rename this to colors for the purpose of the demonstration. And what you're going to need, first and foremost, is some animators. And I'm going to be making everything from scratch once again, because I feel like that would be the most effective at helping you to understand exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, so the first thing you're going to need is a cycling animator. I'm going to call this colors because that's what it's doing, changing the color. This is the animator. This is the exact hierarchy you should be using. To be fair, it could be any parent object, but I think having them all in this exact chain makes it a lot easier. Now, on our animator, we're going to create an animation. This is one of our states. States being, you know, modes, I guess, or different weapons if you want to get contextual with it. All that this is going to do is it's going to change the color of our quad here to red. And that's it. As you can see, it's red. If I turn the preview off, it's white. If I play the animation, it's red. Easy peasy. Um, I'm going to do that same thing two more times. Make a blue animation. Do the same thing. Record. Change it to blue. All good. Make another animation. Set it to yellow. Etc. Etc. Just making some animations here for demonstration. All right. So I've got three animations in one animator. Uh, they're just kind of here in this weird stack. Um, <laughs> so. If I play this, obviously, because there's only one transition here, it's just going to play red. So if I play the animator, it's just going to play red. Uh, now, if I make some transitions here, just some really basic ones to start out with, and then I play the animator, then it's going to transition from red to blue to yellow, because that's what this is doing. You can actually see in the animator window that when the animators run red, blue, yellow. Pretty simple. Now, that's cool, but we want control. To gain control, we have to be able to turn things on and off that we normally are not able to, these animators. Uh, in the Unity package, I've already included the script to do this. How you go about creating this keyframe is up to you, but it's completely imperative that this keyframe is present. What you're going to do is you're going to create a new animation here. You can call it whatever you want. I like to call it suspend. That's what it does. I'm going to contextualize it with colors so I don't use it anywhere else. And if you have my script, all you've got to do right click up here and add the behavior keyframe. Credits to Hardlight608 for 
the method of adding things such as behavior keyframes to the context menu, it has been incredibly helpful. And he doesn't get enough credit for that kind of stuff. That'll create a keyframe here called rename this. And all you're going to do is hit F2 to rename this, hit backspace, and now it's referencing itself. Move this frame to the first position on frame one and change its value to zero. Now what you've done is you've created a keyframe that you can slot into an animation. And what that's going to do is it's going to disable itself. <laughs> Literally, it's going to turn this checkbox from on to off on itself. That is sort of hard to wrap your head around, I suppose, if you haven't ever done animations before, but trust me, it works. Is you're gonna restructure this a bit. You can structure this in any way you want as long as the transition's the same. We're going to delete our bunky bad transitions. I like to make it into a sort of zipper shape. Uh, it's always how I've made it. You can make it however you want. And drag your suspend animation in. And copy it and paste it because you're going to need one suspend per transition here. One suspend per state. Now, what's important for any kind of state machine stuff that you want to be controlling with gestures is that none of these should be writing defaults. Most animations you're going to be making on the avatar that aren't controlled by gestures should not write defaults because that locks the functionality of that animation to that exact animator and doesn't let anything else affect its values. Now, to create a cycler, we have all of our components. We have the three animations here that are going to be our three states, red, blue, and yellow. And we have our suspense, three of them, per one per state. You're going to want to structure your transitions so it goes one to suspend, suspend to two, two to suspend, two, and then suspend two to state three, and so on and so forth. So you create this sort of zippery Z-shape pattern. At the very end, you're going to want to make a transition from the last suspend all the way back to one. This is where it gets a little tedious. Unity, unfortunately, does not allow you to batch edit transition times, even if the animations are the exact same length, like actually the exact same length. So you're going to want to do this manually. You're going to have to do this manually, rather. When you click on an animation, you can see a transitions tab here. And this is basically how Unity is going to be handling what happens when another state is up in the chain, I suppose. Um, also, just really quickly, you're going to want to make sure that uh, none of these animations are looping. Because that can mess stuff up. It can do more, it can do interesting things, like you can use that, but for our purposes, we don't need them to be looping. Uh, how we set these transitions up is extremely simple. Every state that we have that transitions into a suspend needs the same settings. Exit time, one, transition time, zero. Just play the state, and then at the very end, last frame, just transition to the next state. We're gonna do that for, oh, we're gonna do that for the other two. Now, these are set up properly. For the suspends, there's actually a little trick. Again, credit to Hardlight for this trick because it is extremely useful for what we're doing. You're going to go into your parameters tab here. I know. Add a Boolean. You can call this whatever you want. Hardlight calls it true, and I call it true. And you're just going to click the plus here. And what that does is it says that disregard exit time, disregard any kind of duration, as long as this is checked, which it always is in the animator, go from suspend into readying up state two. And that makes it so that your transitions between your states are really fast and snappy, and they feel good to do with clunky, slow, terrible gestures. You're gonna do that for all three of these. So they're the same. Uh, this is done. This is the state machine. It's it's proper. It's gonna function clunkily, but it'll it'll work. Like it'll it'll go. And the functionality of this state machine, if you were to use it as is, is that you would be able to target this animator with a gesture and hold it down. And if you held it for one second, you would be in state two. 
and if you held it for two seconds, you'd be in state three, just like normal cycling animators do. Now the problem with that obviously is that every time you do the gesture, you would start all the way back at state zero, which is good for sync, but kind of clumsy to use, especially if you have more than just three items. Holding it down for three seconds is, you know, generally no problem, but when you have like eight or nine items, you know, you don't want to be standing there for that long, just holding a gesture down, waiting for your item to appear, with the possibility of desyncing every second. Speaking of desync, something that we found in general to help with desyncing is to set the update mode on your animators that need to do state machine stuff, like logic, to animate physics instead of normal. That's just something that we found through testing. There's no specifics about it. <laughs> so we've got our cycler, and it properly changes our color with our states. Well, great, but we're not done. In order to make it so that every time you do the gesture, you continue from your previous state, you have to buffer this with what I like to refer to as a proxy animation, which we're going to create here. Create a new animation controller, call it proxy. I'm going to call it proxy colors so that I don't use it anywhere else because I do tend to use the same names for a lot of things. And what you're going to do is put that into the top object, which I've called proxy for ease of use, and add an animation. Colors proxy. Now all that this animation does is toggle the animator here. So you're literally going to click the animation, colors proxy, add a behavior keyframe. It's going to generate this familiar keyframe here called rename this. Change its path to the name of the object that you want to trigger the animation state of. In this case, it's animator because we want to be toggling this checkbox. Remember, that's what behavior does. The behavior keyframe is essentially just this checkbox. Normally, you can't animate this in, in Unity, but with this exact keyframe, you're able to uh, easily. Now, if I do the gesture, if I do the gesture, if I hit the animator, the proxy animator, I'm on red, and I'm still on red. If I hit it again, then I'm on blue. If I hit it again, then I'm on yellow. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to now go over a few things that help overall with syncing this system and getting it to not desync as much as possible. VRChat is very flawed uh, in the way that it syncs players. So there is no 100% consistent way to getting these 100% consistent across all the clients. There's just too much going on and some people like just live in the jungle and their internet's just gonna drop all your shit. It's not good. So first off, what you can do is you can make it so that this animator is just sort of like a, like a pulse animator. And what I mean by that is that it'll do the thing once for say five frames and then suspend. And I did say suspend, I do literally mean suspend. What I like to do generally is create like a mini state machine in here with all the same settings. So exit time one, transition duration zero. Let me make sure that I set this to not looping so as to not mess up my transitions here. There we go. Set suspend colors to our true boolean in the animator, which we trigger on at all times. Turn right defaults off, etc., etc. You know, this this little thing here. Okay, now what this is going to do is it's going to trigger this animator and then turn itself off. We don't have to worry about anything uh, desyncing because of this proxy any longer because this turns itself off really quickly. So what you can do is you can target this with another animator and create a very precise timed system here. Now for the animator itself, we have our transition set at zero, which is not actually zero frames. Uh, it's kind of odd the way it works. If you have it at the zero frame, it tends to last like a second, like a full second. And then if you have it at any other frame, it will last that exact frame time. And what I mean by that is if I lock this window and play the animation, 
that's like not <laughs> zero frames, right? Now, if I go into my animator and I change the frame time of each of these states here to be one frame exactly, and something interesting happens. In our animator, you'll see that these are now much faster. They are insanely quick. You can see here in the game window, they are just firing off right away. This is just like literally selecting buttons. Now, that works just great uh, in theory, right? It's fast and snappy. It feels really good and it works locally fine, but because it's so fast, it actually creates a bit of a desync between players if they drop the frames that were required to animate that, as you've only given them one frame to update your state. What I've found works the best is about 30 seconds, 25 to 30. It'll make it, the, the longer you make this, the more sluggish your system becomes. So it's all about balancing what works for everyone else and what feels good to use. And my balance that I found is anywhere between 25 frames and 30 frames. It is still, you know, very fast. If the game is running at 90 frames per second, especially, this is extremely responsive still. But the 30 frame buffer generally just helps for people to update better. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'm going to be including this uh, exact folder here as a Unity package as well. That's going to be in the description. Um, basically what you do now is you create a gesture. We're just gonna call this, you know, gesture. <laughs> and let's say we've got like a hierarchy of some kind actually. So I'm gonna create a bunch of empty objects. You know, pretend this is the armature of your avatar and then you've got your stuff at the bottom of it. Right, so this is gonna be your gesture. All you would do is you'd add the behavior keyframe to your gesture. And then what you can do is you can manually put in the path of your proxy animator because that's what the gesture needs to do. It needs to trigger this proxy animator. Or you can uh, use my, if you have my script, you can use this copy path button for the proxy animator. You just select the object you want the path of, right click it, go into your gesture, Rename this, F2, hit Control v to paste the path. Um, let's assume the first object here would be the avatar root. It would be the name of your avatar. You can safely just remove that. All you need is the armature and below. And now you have a keyframe that has the exact path to the object you want from the root of wherever you selected. So you just use this gesture as this animator pretty to, you know, you'd use that gesture to trigger this animator, yada, yada, yada. You do the gesture once, it goes to red, do it twice, it goes to blue. Very simple. The reset can be done however you want. I prefer to actually do the reset on an emote because I can control the times of it really easily and make it very not noticeable that I'm resetting. Unfortunately, to reset, it does require the entire thing to turn off and then turn back on. You can do that however you want. You can make an animator that does that just you trigger the animator with a gesture and it turns this off for a couple frames and turns it back on. Or you can make an emote and just facilitate it in your, you know, your emotes menu. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me either on Discord, I'm Rero, capital R-E-R-O, number 9097, or in game, I'm RetroGeo, capital R, lowercase E-T-R-O, all capital G-E-O, RetroGeo. In any case, that's all I've got really. So let me know what you think and hope you can create some really nice stuff with this. Yeah.